Welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, I'm reviewing Freedom Force. Before we move on, just a couple of things. There will be minor spoilers and some of the clips are of boss fights, but they aren't long and they don't show the context. The same thing goes with story cutscenes, but you don't know what's going on, so if you haven't played the game, you might see some stuff, but it's a review. There are going to be some spoilers, but it's not anything major. And just another heads up, I'm not the best at real-time strategy, tactic games, whatever you want to call it, but I did beat Freedom Force. You might see some footage and wonder, why am I doing that, but for me, controlling four characters, I forget some of them sometimes, that's just the way I am. And some of the footage does lag a little bit, just not terribly. That's just the way the game ran sometimes. Now, here is my review of Freedom Force. It's the 1960s. Frank Stiles is sitting on a bench. He used to work on a Manhattan Project until he got removed for calling one of his co-workers a communist. Years later, he sees his rival meeting with a mysterious figure, and when he finally catches up to them, he is shot. But this is not the end for Frank. As he is starting his descent into death, a Minuteman statue starts to glow, bringing new life to him, literally. Frank Stiles is transformed into the Minuteman, and he is sworn to defend America against enemies, foreign and domestic. But it's more complicated than just fighting the damn red commie bastard utopians. It's up to Minuteman and the group that slowly forms around him to figure out what's causing all this mayhem and destruction. I'll give you a hint. It's not just a communist. Freedom Force pays tribute to the Silver Age of comics. This takes place in the 60s, and you'll run into the things you would expect from some old comics. A party member from another planet trying to help us, and he has mind control powers. A man with a terrible disease forced to stay inside a metal suit. He's like a machine, and he makes one hell of a tank. A tough Latino from the barrio turned into El Diablo, a ladies man with a short temper, and he can shoot fireballs too. A geek turned into a superhero ant thing. For some reason, there's a mysterious substance called Energy X, and it has infected certain members of society, gifting them with abilities related to their life story and personality. Why is this substance on Earth? Who's behind it? Why do you have a life form from another planet snoop around trying to help your party? Who's behind all the chaos? Well, that's for you to find out, and it's up to the Freedom Force to do it. The story combined with its presentation, it really hits it out the park. It's very solid. This game plays just like a comic series. There are different campaigns that play out, just like you're reading several issues of a comic book. But they all connect, and during the game, you run into other superheroes that join your squad. You learn some of their stories and participate in missions involving their problems, and ultimately, it wraps up together with heroes forming bonds, bantering, and trying to save the area. You might call it cliche, but it's on purpose, and I was really invested in the story. What really impressed me is the attention to detail. It has substance. Most of the heroes you run into have their own intros that play out like pages from a comic. Some of them have missions dedicated to their own side stories. For example, Manbot, he has a tragic backstory, and later on you'll deal with something from his past in a mission. The characters are more than just their costume and superpowers. Their personalities count, too. It can be a little cheesy, cliche, or I guess corny in some parts, but as I said before, this is a tribute to the Silver Age of comics. That's a part of its charm. You're going to see some of the tropes, but it's not out of laziness. It's on purpose. Minuteman sounds like a stereotypical red-blooded goody-two-shoes, with his voice, too. I'm here to save everyone from the villains. Things like that. It's just like a comic book from the 50s. I was caught off guard. I wasn't expecting to like it this much. I enjoyed the cast of characters. The villains are varied and goofy and just wacky. You are constantly thrown into ridiculous situations. The attention to detail is there. It feels like the season of a TV show instead of one episode. And there's also an announcer that guides you through the story and it adds to the charm with this typical announcer voice. What trouble will the gang get into next time? Who's this mysterious figure talking to Freedom Force? Find out next time. During my playthrough, I ran into giant ants, cops infected with Weapon X, dinosaurs, doppelgangers, and more. 
With all the comic book movies thrown into our faces nowadays, I thought I was going to get tired of it, but I was smiling, laughing, and was entertained all the way through. Freedom Force is immersive, and it succeeds in making you feel like you are in an old comic book, but the story isn't perfect. You unlock a bunch of heroes, and there are over 30 missions, but it's not a 100 hour RPG. This game encourages multiple playthroughs of the campaigns to try out heroes you missed during the story, but it would have been nice to scale the amount of heroes down a bit so their backgrounds can be explored more than just an intro and a few pieces of dialogue in between missions. But that's just a minor flaw because it does give everyone something to do. It just doesn't focus on one or two characters. But there are so many people you can recruit in a short amount of time. It's hard to try and find time for all of them. You won't. There's also something else I didn't like. The pacing in some parts is a bit messed up because some missions are just tedious. For example, there were some missions where it was longer than it needed to be. In one area, I was chasing robots all over a level and it felt like it was forever. But as I said before, these are minor issues. Overall, I enjoyed the story, it put a smile on my face, I liked the characters, and the story's very immersive. Freedom Force is a real-time tactics slash strategy game with RPG elements. You can pause any time the planner moves out. Each mission takes place on a map. Some maps are small, but some of them can be quite big. Each mission you get character points and prestige points. Character points upgrade your heroes while prestige points unlock new ones. During missions you have different objectives. For example, protect an area, shut down portals, and the standard kill X amount of enemies and some others too. There are different types of heroes. Some can fly. Some can jump on buildings, others use different elements and projectiles, and some are slow tanks. The key to making a successful party is building a diverse group of heroes based on the mission you are on. Now, it's fun to experiment with all the different heroes and to find a team that really works for you. It's essential. Manbot was my tank of choice, and I loved using Man of War. He is especially great against machines. The environment also plays a role. You can hop on buildings, throw cars, hit civilians, buildings can collapse. This made my playthrough intense. There were points in the game where buildings would collapse with my character on top of them. A miscalculation caused El Diablo to shoot a fire projectile and hit a car three feet in front of him and it caused a huge explosion It almost killed my whole party. And it knocked El Diablo back so far he flew back into a wall and hit himself and caused more damage. So. I almost killed everyone in my party due to that miscalculation. It's entertaining to watch the different animations. Manbot's double uppercut flings enemies 50 feet in the air and they hit the ground bouncing back and forth like a rubber ball. The variety of options you have is refreshing and adds to the replay value. There were a bunch of heroes I didn't get to use and I can easily go back and redo some missions with a different team. As far as strategy goes, me personally, I couldn't rush in most of the missions to just straight up attack everyone. My heroes died a lot that way and I did try bum rushing a lot of missions because I'm not good at controlling four characters at once even when you have an option to pause. That's just me. I'm more of a turn based guy. But I did what I did and I had to change up to adapt to this type of play. You do have to think about your team. Make sure you have someone that can fly and reach tough areas and get those little capsules around. Make sure you have a tank and someone that can do a lot of damage. For example, Minuteman. He can use his 300% power up move and smash and that does a lot of damage. The game does change the pace up a bit by having solo missions and missions where you can't use certain heroes. I heard you can break the game easily by creating a hero. Yes, you can create a hero, but you can make them overpowered easily. I haven't tried that. There's also a bunch of great mods. There's a lot of great things you can do with the custom hero creator, especially with mods. I'm not good at games like this and I was able to beat it. I had trouble on some missions and it was definitely challenging, but overall, it's not the most thought provoking complex game in terms of combat, but it's fun. There are some RPG elements, you earn character points and can level up and upgrade your different characters, and there's different skill sets they have, attributes, and you can also have different traits that you unlock. But it's nothing really deep or complex, it's just there. 
Now, an interesting thing about Freedom Force is that your prestige points are affected by what you do throughout your mission. And I'm not just talking about primary or secondary objectives, but also how you act. If you damage objects like buildings, cars, etc., or hurt civilians, you lose prestige points. It's a nice feature, but I do have an issue with it. Sometimes it's hard to avoid collateral damage. Civilians can get in the way and act like dumbasses. It gets very chaotic during some fights, and sometimes you can't avoid hitting civilians or having an object break or a building collapse, and it's kind of not your fault that you lose those prestige points, so that's a little annoying. Also, the enemy AI can be dumb as fuck too. There were several moments where an enemy would just stand there waiting for me to attack them, and sometimes they didn't even respond. I fought a huge ass dinosaur, and halfway through he stopped attacking me. I didn't stun him or use any powers, it was just dumb AI. And I just gotta say, there were some bullshit moments. Certain enemies use an acid attack that drains your health slowly, and I'm mainly talking about giant ants. They bombard you with that, and it's fucking bullshit. It's a cheap attack, it's overpowered, and I don't give a fuck what anyone says, I just think it's bullshit. Now with that being said, it was fun playing with the different powers, planning your attacks, figuring out where your flying character will go, or maybe place a character on top of a building and have him shoot projectiles, or use a mind control power to get enemies to fight each other and just sit back and watch them eliminate each other and go in for the kill, so you can save yourself some health. My biggest complaint about the gameplay, and possibly the game itself, is the pacing of some of the missions. For the most part, I enjoyed the campaigns, it's a great game, but there are some missions that I feel drag on a bit too much. It could have been cut down or cut out, and they could have put a better mission in there, something more creative than just run around killing this enemy, and I'm specifically referring to this one mission with robots. But there's some levels like that that I feel like could have been cut out, or maybe cut down or changed the pace of it. That's all, it just drags on a little bit and it can be annoying, but this is a fun game, and I enjoyed it. I have to go back and actually create a character so I can be OP as fuck and destroy everything in my path, because there were some missions where I was dying a lot. I gotta go get my revenge. Freedom Force does a great job with its presentation and atmosphere. It's a great looking game. Yeah, it's almost 20 years old, but it's colorful. There are a bunch of different heroes with their own unique looks, and villains too. I love the art style, especially when you see the intros that look like comic books. You go to so many different areas too. They really got creative with the atmosphere. You will travel to an underground city infested with ants for some reason. A mechanical lair. A place that looks like the Garden of Eden. Not saying what it is, but it's something mythical. You fight all types of enemies and bosses. One of the first people you fight in the beginning is an enemy that turned into a thing called Nuclear Winter. And his lair is the opposite of a winter wonderland. Even little things like your background, which shows your superhero hideout in between mission, changes during the game. There is a lot of attention to detail, and that's one of the best things about Freedom Force. And I enjoyed the music too, I liked all of the tracks, I enjoyed the soundtrack, so as far as presentation goes, that's one of the best things about Freedom Force. It's like you're living in a comic book for a short period of time. Now I played the GOG version on Windows 8.1 and for the most part I had no problems running it. There were some times where it lagged for no reason and I tried loading it twice and it gave me a black screen but one hour later it was fine and it never gave me that issue again. It's weird. I heard the Steam version is buggy and it's a pain in the ass so the GOG version is better from what I hear and if you're playing on Windows 10. I heard that there's a lot of compatibility issues, so not saying that this game is easy to run. I just didn't have many problems with it, but there might be some compatibility issues. But if you can play this game, I recommend it. It's not the hardest of real-time strategy slash tactics games. I've played Jagged Alliance 2, and I've played Fallout Tactics in other games. This one is easier than them, but that's just my opinion. But even if you're good at this game and it's not hard, it's an enjoyable experience, it's immersive, it's just fun to get lost in this world. Yeah, it has some issues with its pacing and some of the enemy AI and sometimes civilians too, but 
overall, it's just a fun game and I recommend it. And it's a damn shame we don't get more games like this. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. If you want to leave a comment, you know how to get into contact with me. Have a great day.